Hi, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be long. It's mostly going to be talking about black America, the political parties, Democrat and Republican, their history. And this is more so directed towards educating black America about things that we have forgotten. Why am I bringing this up? Why am I talking about this? Well, I just went to go see Emmett Till, the Till movie here. And um, there are things in that film, some of it which may seem fabricate it, but something I just cannot wrap my head around when I look at today's division and amongst black America is that unlike whites, unlike Hispanics, unlike the majority of races here in, in America, different ethnic backgrounds, the Muslims, who come here, the Asians who come here, what was so prolific in that movie was not how different the whites in the South, how harshly they, their attitudes were towards blacks because the white had it as well. They did depict that up in um, Chicago. However, there is a difference and I'm going to elaborate on that. But the one thing that I saw that um, explains a lot about today when I look at the black community is this division that we have. We're willing to sacrifice our own in order to keep our family or our, our our relatives okay instead of banding together and unifying and coming under one umbrella to face our enemies together so another part that um i found interesting and had to research this too so the plantation that Hill had decided to go down and visit with his uncle and cousins. What urges me to my core, it really bothers me to know that blacks feared so much of failure if moving to the North and starting a life of their own, that they stayed in the South, that they decided to continue to pick cotton, that they decided to still live on a plantation under the constant threat of white supremacy waking up in the middle of the night to come lynch you because you looked at someone wrong. Like that burns me to my core to see how people cowered like that because they are afraid of failure. These are the same individuals that continue to accept welfare because they are afraid of failure. They are afraid to try and say, I don't need you. I can go and build a life of my own somewhere else with a community that does care. That's what they had up in Chicago. There was more unity amongst the blacks up there than there was down in the South. So not only did this did Till's mother entrust her family members to take care of them, they were cowards enough that they would rather him sacrifice his life, even though 
the man of the house had a gun. And then he tries to justify it instead of saying, I am sorry. That shit, I walked out of the theater because it made me throw up. It made me understand why our community is the way that it is now. And it's that divide that the Democrats in particular use and they fester that wound. They try to divide us between, you know, the uppities and the, the ones who don't have a, a I guess, a, a thorough education. They pin us up against each other. They do it now and they have been doing it back then. So, you know, I will be doing some series in which, I mean, I go to a lot of these old bookstores and, um, like the other day I got, it's really hard to find information on Google, which hasn't been either buried or hidden from you. So you have to look for things very, very specific and you will find it. You just have to be very specific with your words. Um, using quotes. Um, and I had decided to go to half price bookstores. You guys, I love half price bookstores. So I got this really, really, really old encyclopedia of American history. This one is a bicentennial edition. It was published Um, this was published in 1904, <laughs> so, or at least it was initially published in 1904, but then it, uh, some other things were added and now the latest, it goes up to from 1953, 1961, 65, 1970, and 1976. So this goes up all the way up to that. I also bought, I'll be doing some segments on my research too. So I wanted to know more about Venezuela. So I bought this book and this book. I've already begun reading this book and um, America is going down a very similar path and no, it's not the Republican party. It's all socialist Democrat party. So I will be doing a read over, over this book. So you guys can be, become more informed of the similarities that are taking place. Um, and it seems like the Biden administration is taking a handbook from these individuals. But, oh, and I also bought this book, The Elements of Agriculture. This book here, you know, just in case this shit hits the fan. All Rights Reserved, 1910. 1910. So, um, it teaches you how to mend the soil, plant food, everything the government doesn't want you to remember, things they want you to forget. They like to rewrite history. So back to my research. Like I said, this is going to be a very lengthy video. I hope that those who are African American, and if you're not African American, fuck that. If you're not black, if you're not black, or um, if you aren't black, and if you are black, I hope you do more research. I hope you understand more where I'm coming from. I hope that you take this as a, a journey for you to seek out this information for yourself and come up with your decision, but 
what I wholeheartedly would like is for you to seriously contemplate whether or not you being a Democrat is in your best interest. So I'm going to first start off with reading some of Malcolm X. Okay. And by watching that movie till it makes sense. Actually, if you just are in the political sphere, if you understand that you need people in both high and low places, then you understand that the world isn't as black and white like those who are the Democrats would like you to believe. So Michael Max, I'm going to read some of, some of his stuff. And this is very important, especially this next section, because there's a lot of our history being rewritten in a way to make a certain party pass, a certain party's pass seem um, more vanilla than its true dark historical roots. And we, there's plenty of, there's plenty of um, evidence to show who these people were, that the party has never switched. Um, and that the, the ideology of the Democrat party, it never changed. But without further ado, let's keep reading. So the white conservatives aren't friends of the Negro either but they at least don't try to hide it. Something I have been saying for a very long time. They are like wolves. They show their teeth in a snare that keeps the Negro away, always aware of where he stands with them. But the white liberals are foxes who also show their teeth to the Negro, but pretend that they are smiling the white liberal are more dangerous than the conservatives. They lure the Negro, and as the Negro runs from the growling wolf, he flees into the open jaws of the smiling fox. The job of the Negro civil rights leader is to make the Negro forget that the wolf and the fox both belong to the same family. Both are canines, and no matter which one of them the Negro places his trust in, he never ends up in the White House, but always in the Dog House. So, I have always strived for Black Americans, including my own family members, to be independent. No one has your destiny planned out. Only you do. However, in order to navigate society and life, you need to know the ones who will give you a hard time and the ones who will never let you ascend. So going back to more of this man's saying, conservatism in America politics means let's keep the nig, the nig in their place. And liberalism means let's keep the knee grow in their place, but tell them we'll treat them a little better. Let fools, let's fool them more with more promises. With these choices, I felt that the American black man only needed to choose which one of which one to be eaten by the liberal fox or the conservative wolf because both of them would eat him. It's very true. You gotta learn how to be content, make your money, be content, go about your business, go about your way. It does not mean that you cannot um, have acquaintances. It doesn't mean that you can't even build long lasting relationships. You just need to know who and what these signs are. I didn't go for Goldwater. Please remember that name. 
any more than for Johnson. Johnson, this is LB, um, um, Brendan, London B. Johnson and Goldwater. Um, uh, I forgot his name already. It'll probably come up in one of these. Yes, Barry Goldwater, 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 I think, and LBJ. Yes, LBJ and Goldwater. So they were running against each other. So now that you know who those individuals are, let's keep going. I didn't go for Goldwater any more than for Johnson, except that in a wolf's den, I always know exactly where I stood. I'd watch the dangerous wolf closer than I would the smooth, sly fox. The wolf's very growling would keep me alert and fighting him to survive, whereas I might be lured and fooled by the trickery fox. I've given you an illustration of a fox. When the assassination in Dallas made Johnson president, who was the first person he called for? It was for his best friend, Dickie Richard Russell of Georgia. Who is this? Okay. Civil rights was a moral issue. Johnson was declaring to everybody while his best friend was the Southern racists who led the civil rights opposition. How would some sheriff's, how would some sheriff sound declaring himself so against bank robbery and Jesse James, his best friend? <laughs> how would some sheriff sound declaring himself so against black robbery and Jesse James, his best friend? Jesse James, if you guys don't know, is what? Let's Google it. A bank robber. <laughs> Do you get that? I hope you're catching on. Goldwater, as a man, I respect for speaking out his true conviction. Something really done in politics today. I can name of someone who's like this and would get so much shit because he spoke what, what's on his mind. He wasn't whispering to racists and smiling at integrationalists. I felt Goldwater wouldn't have risked his unpopular stance without conviction. He flatly told black men he wasn't for them. And there is, and there is this to consider. Always, the black people have advanced further when they have seen they had to rise up against a system that they clearly saw was outright against them. Under the steady lullaby sung by foxy liberals, the Northern, Northern Negro became a beggar. But the Southern Negro, facing the honest, snarling white man, rose up to battle that white man for his freedom long before it had been in the North. Now, if you want to know where black conservatism come from, it come from black Southern Negroes who saw day in and day out what white liberals, Democrats, put them through on a daily basis. That does toughen a man. You know the saying, I think it goes something like this, hard time breed hard men, hard men bring good times, good times bring um, breed weak men, weak men bring hard times. Northern Negroes, the ones who probably cuddle up to the, um, I guess, I mean, let's, let's, let's not be so naive to think that white Northerners had our back because obviously Goldwater, who was a Republican, did not. The Republicans never claimed to be you know, for the people, for anything. They're, they're like, as long as we can make sure you're not free, that's as good as it gets. Go live your life. Whatever you do, go make your money. Don't interfere with my business. And we're good. 
sure, we can do business together if you want to barter, but don't step on my turf. Got it? Good. Anyways, I didn't feel that Goldwater was any better for black men than Johnson or vice versa. It wasn't in the United States. Uh, I wasn't in the United States at election time, but if I had, I wouldn't have put myself in the fifth position of voting for either candidate for presidency or for recommending to any black man to do so. It has turned out that Johnson, that it's Johnson in the White House and black votes were a major factor in his winning uh, decisively as he wanted to. If it had been Goldwater, all I am saying is that the black people would at least have known they are dealing with an honest growling wolf rather than a fox who could have them half digested before they even knew what was happening. And that is exactly what happened. LBJ implemented the most racist, the most devastating contributing factor to the decay of the black community that I have seen in, a, in my lifetime in modern day society. The New Deal is what exactly this man is talking about. Not only did it destroy black families by disenfranchising the black man. It, and you know, I'm going to talk about when I, when I say this, I know a lot of people are going to get offended, but if you want to see the decay of society, plant naive, but promising notions in women ear. If you want to see the, 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 the decay of society in a violent manner, an aggressive manner, plant naive and promising thoughts in the men, in the, in the ears of men. So, uh, with women, they are a lot more compassionate. So that's why, I mean, I, I guess I messed up a little bit when I said, if you want to plant, if you want to see the destruction of society, and you want to plant notions of compassion and promises, plant that in the ear of women. If you want to see the decay or the fall of society uh, through the notions of rage and revenge, plant that in the ear of men. They have their uniqueness and people like to still sit here and say in, the, in modern times that, oh, there's no difference between men and women. There most certainly is. Hitler used the rage of white men to change, well, white men to change the course of his history. Well, to change the course of Germany's fortunes by revenge, by using revenge. He blamed the Jews for everything, for all of Germany's ailments. So that's why I said what I said. Now, People love to claim that the parties switch. I wanted to show you guys, this is something that's on the National Governors Association. They also have a um, senator version of this, a representative version of this. And I decided to look into a few states. Um, and in particular, I forgot one more. So, um, I'm going to go back and I want you guys to see some similarities. Tell me what you think. All right. Now this is Texas. This is Texas. Governor Abbott is, we all know a Republican. Okay. Going all the way back to 1846, 1847. I want you to notice something between the southern states the northern states and 
and tell me if you see a pattern. Am I S S I S S I P P I? <laughs> yes, Mississippi was my favorite word to spell as a child. Um, okay, so these are the southern states, Texas. Well, I just decided to take the ones in the Sun Belt. I did not include Arkansas. Arkansas was a slave state, but um, as well too. So if you guys can see the pattern, you probably uh, can do the research on your own and go to these websites and put in Arkansas, put in, um, let's call it another one, maybe Ohio, put in Virginia. You'll, you'll, it wouldn't, you, you won't be surprised. It fits our history. Um, so this is Texas. And up until, people might not know this, but this here, this error here, is the Reconstruction error. This is the error and after the Civil War was won by the Union, um, this was the time when Republicans try to make ways down the South and try to put, oh, sorry, try to put blacks who were former slaves and those who were free, who are up North, who wanted to, I guess, get in politics. They tried to have them run down the South. Um, but this did not last long. The, the reconstruction era ended, um, this was the, the time frame was between 1865 and 1870, if I'm not mistaken. Let's double check. Reconstruction era. Um, 1863 to 1877. Very, very short lived. Let's just say um, the Democrats, white liberals, former slave owners, um, the, the party that erected from the Confederacy. Yeah, they didn't like that. So after Republicans very short lived reign down in like literally to the T 1877, you know, right towards the end, it went right back Democrat. So this was Texas. The next time they saw a Republican. Was at the start of 1979. And then from 1995 onward, it has just been Republican. We go down to Florida. Florida was also a slave state. You see that? Look at that. Same time frame as Texas. Republicans tried, but they ultimately failed. Democrat, Democrat, all the way up until when? 1990. And it's been Republican ever since. For Alabama. So there's an interesting um, tale. And it's not really a tale, but for the longest growing up, I thought my dad was crazy about this, but the deep state, that is something that is very, very real. And in my research, I found the oldest Democrat party. So you see this whole Democratic Republican here. It's hard to say this, but so when you hear the word conservative, I wonder what people think. What do you, what do you think when you hear the word conservative? It doesn't mean that you are right. It just means that you have a certain set of values um, and old institutions, I guess you can say. So, yes. So what conservatism mean is just a commitment to traditional values and ideas with opposition to change or innovation. So basically you're very rigid. 
Um, and if it is, it, if it's in the form of political views, then you're getting on to, you know, someone who favor free enterprise, private ownership and social traditional idea, um, ideas. But as far as just conservatism and name, um, it, and without regarding politics, it literally just mean upholding traditional values and basically in opposition of change. You're just very rigid. Um, but going back to this Alabama, Alabama was definitely a slave state. So Democratic Republic is more Republicans are more like Democrat. They were definitely Democrats, or I guess you can call them in the center, but they had very uh, views on, you know, uh, when it came to conservatism inside of the Democrat party. Then this gets dropped. And again, like, this one didn't even last that long at all. Alabama was not having it. Alabama was not having a Republican in it at all. Okay, and then it's been Democrat ever since. We had one Republican in 1987. One Republican, well, two Republicans ever since 2003. And you know the one, um, and I don't know who this individual is. She is a Republican. So the one thing I will say about those who talk crap, especially the Democrats, there are so many Democrats who like to point at the southern states of Alabama and Mississippi for being the, the states with the most poverty, and even though they have the highest count of blacks individuals. Yet they fail. They fail to acknowledge that the South was under one party rule for over a century. I think that party has more to do with the state of how Alabama is, how Mississippi is, how certain parts of Texas are. You know, and, 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 and even in Texas and places that are democratically controlled, they look like shit. You do not absolve yourself of taking resources from my people for over a century, even after slavery had ended. The Republicans, I'm willing to give them a chance to see if they can fix it, to fix what you guys have done for over a century. Georgia. Georgia is very old. One of those, um, the added to, I guess, Sorry. Add to the union long before Texas and Alabama. But I don't know. I'm guessing the radical faction must be the left. The Whig began as a political faction that opposed absolute monarchy and Catholic emancipation. Supporting constitutional, supporting constitutional monarchism with a parliamentary system. They played the central role in Glorious Revolution in, in 1688 and were the standing enemies of the Roman Catholic steward kings and predators. So they're more into... There are, yeah, so I, yeah, back, exactly. They were the left-wing liberalism. And obviously the conservative faction, if we were to gander, they, uh, they're up. Well, I was seeing that. What was their ideology? Oh, so was liberalism, classic liberalism. Well, no. Oh, no, this goes back to, okay, that's interesting. 
the Whig and the Tory. Well, we will have to come back to looking at that, but you had Jefferson Republican, Democratic Republican. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's because we were still under, oh my God. Really, Leah? Okay, simple fix, you guys. Let's fix this really quick. Uh, when was the Revolutionary War? <laughs> um... What years were those? <laughs> okay, that, that makes a lot more sense. Um, 1775 to 1770, 1787. So let's go and 87. Okay, there we go. That makes a lot more sense. During this time, we were. this is still under British control. Um, and it's during this time where a lot of the slaves were brought in. A lot of slaves, a lot of people don't know about this, at the height of slavery, at the height of the um, Atlantic trade, um, it, was, it was done during the British control of the Americans, colonies, I guess you would call them. A lot of people think that, no, it happened after, but then it wouldn't make sense. But, you know, let's just for sake look at the uh, transatlantic. Between 1850, well, between the, between about 1500 and 1900. Then you have someone here, okay, 1867. All right, when was the height of it? Eighteenth century. During the 18th century, when according to historians estimate nearly three-fifths of the total volume of transatlantic slave took place. So, we know the revolutionary, the French, the American Revolution happened, and we all know that we have a problem with slavery here, and that's the reason why the founding fathers put it in the document, uh, oh, sorry, put it in the Constitution, the framework that would later on give us our freedoms. We thank him, we thank them for that. So, from 1796 onward, it's just been ran by a Democrat Republican. We all know that Georgia has some of the most horrible stories when it comes to slavery. And then here comes the Republicans for the Reconstruction era then right back under Democrat control. It wasn't until 2003 and onward, Georgia has had a Republican as a governor. The Mississippi, the same 
until this time, the reconstruction, and then everything else. And there's nothing here. I wonder where he was. Oh, military? No, political party. Maybe he was just a, a governor with no affiliation. Um, yeah, so, yeah, the Republicans did here as well. Stay in power until after the Reconstruction era. So we all know that during this time, not only did we have the KKK erected, the Jim Crow laws erected, the first Civil Rights Act actually to be passed was the Civil Rights of 1875. A lot of people don't know this, but this was during the time of Reconstruction era. This was heavily opposed by Democrats because they did not, white Southerners did not want African Americans to be able to vote. They did not want them to have equal rights, but it's insane how this has been hidden from Americans for a very long time. Somehow the Democrats are really good at making themselves look like the great, the great ones, the ones who care about black America. Like Malcolm X have said, these individuals are foxes. I do not want the same thing to happen to the rest of America. Do not be blinded. Do not be do not let your greed and your, 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 your failure to succeed point you in, into the direction of the fox. The United States federal government, federal law enacted during the reconstruction era in response to civil rights violation against African Americans. The bill was passed by the 43rd United States Congress and signed into law by United States President Ulysses S. Grant on, night, on March 1975. Um, this was eventually overruled. Uh, and I did look into these individuals. Um, it was overruled. Um, I believe in a few years later, like almost a decade later. Yeah. But what this What this basically, what this act was designed to do was to protect all citizens and their civil and legal rights, providing for equal treatment in public accommodations and public transportation and prohibiting exclusion from jury service. It was originally drafted by Senator Charles Sumner in 1870, but did not pass until shortly after Sumner's death in 1875. The law was not effectively enforced, partly because President Grant had favored different measures to help him suppress election related violence against black and Republicans in the Southern United States, which is mm, interesting. So Ulysses S. Grant I think he was a um I forgot if he was a Republican. Yes, he was a Republican. So, like I said, there were a lot of Republicans who did not really care about, you know, blacks. Their their whole thing was that they didn't want the union to succeed. You know, slavery might have started it, but for the most part, uh, or slavery might have started it, slavery might have been an issue, but it was not one of the reasons, in my opinion, which led to the Civil War actually being enacted. So, um, 
Anyways, I wanted for you guys to take a look at the northern states. So um, I would say right now the northern states in particular are definitely having a, um, a battle. Um, Illinois, which was, I believe, the last state to be added to, or at least you can have slaves allowed, or, or it might have been Missouri. I can't remember which one of the, one of the two is, but I do believe, I do know that slavery was not allowed to go past uh, Missouri. Uh, yeah, past Missouri or uh, some line that they had, and, and that did include Illinois as well. So Illinois um, definitely has always been in a battle. Uh, it's best, it's basically a swing state if i if i had to gander just looking at the times parties have flip-flopped here uh but uh, with crazy legislation being passed in illinois it, especially with like this whole safety act i'll be really surprised if the democrats continue to hold on to that state much longer I would be, I wouldn't surprise me at all if Republicans did a streak like this <laughs> year after year after year for at least three times, at least for three terms. That would be interesting. Right now, it's Democrat, Democrat, it went Republican during Trump era, and then it's right back Democrat. Um, and we all know how that place is turning out. No matter where Democrats go, they have this tendency of destroying everything that they touch and leaving people poorer. If the southern states haven't yet um, um, solidified that for you, then I don't know what. After a century of Democrat rule, how many blacks were are rich down there? Not that many. The Republicans only some of the, some of the Republicans that we saw in some of those states just got into office. It's it's going to be very hard to undo a century worth of damage, a century worth of brainwashing the people, a century worth of um, retraining these individuals to, that capitalism is good to wean them off of you know social services and all this other stuff that's in my opinion, is keeping them down. It's going to be very hard to take these individuals off. But I hope that the South does um, prosper under Republican rule. I think they're more concerned about money um, than they are with social issues. Um, and that's just with Illinois. Now let's look at Maryland. Maryland is a very interesting one. Um, so obviously this wig, still British stuff, Federalist, Federalist. Okay, moving more towards um, after the revolution. So Maryland only got gained a Republican. It, didn't, it did not during the reconstruction era um, have that many Republicans in as, uh, well, didn't even elect a, a Republican. It wasn't until well after the end of the reconstruction era that a Republican was elected. That's insane. And then a Republican back in 1951 to 59, 67 to 69, 2003 to 2007. So, oh, yeah. So when you look at some of the areas in like Baltimore, Maryland, you cannot blame this on Republicans. Like, it's, I'm sorry, in a lot of these areas where people are, are poor, it's been under one party rule for a very long time. Now with Michigan, I don't know if you guys have been in Michigan. Now these are your Northern Democrats too, and Republicans as well. But the North, for the most part, well before the well before the Reconstruction era, and I'm thinking this probably happened due to the Civil War. Why they, you know, pretty much were red all the way until 
the era of the Reconstruction era. Went Democrat fusionist for a little while, but then right back Republican for a little while. Democrat, Republican, Repu Republican. So as of late, wow, uh, 1913 to 1917, Republicans dominated until 30, 1933 and 35, 37, 39, 41, 43, 61, 63, 89, 91. So it's been, it's like, it's like they're going through a battle right now too. And uh, as far as the soul of Michigan, um, I find that very interesting. We also know too that the quality of life in Michigan is going down as well. So it's not what it used to be, most definitely. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, I was Republican for a while. They went Democrat during the Reconstruction era for a term. Interesting. And then another Democrat, 1891, 1895, 83 to 87, 2003, 2011. For the most part, Wisconsin does vote blue, uh, does vote red, but I, I would guess with a lot of that population being farmers and um, they do have a very high population too of immigrants up there. It'll be really interesting to see how they vote this, this, you know, this turnout. But I just want you guys to look at those, the differences between how many states in the South were ruled by a one party that claimed to care so much about the, the struggles of black America. Now, with knowing all of this, we're going to get into some crazy things. So where should I start? Oh, man. Okay, so... Remember when I said that I found one of the oldest continuing civil and political organizations in the country? Well, this right here is it. The Regular Democratic Organization, or the Old Regulars, is the oldest continuing civics and political organization in the country. During the first half of the 20th century, the group ruled New Orleans through patronage and political favors. The RDO was created in 1874, the same year the Battle of Liberty Place occurred in a protest of the election of Republican Governor William Kellogg. Under the organization, the group had 17 leaders, one for each city war. The group, also known as the Ring, decided who would run for office, and they handed out jobs and political favors to those who supported the group's candidates. It created thousands of jobs within the city. The RDO worked with major corporations, including Standard Oil and sugar growers and refiners to expand its reach. So the Democrats have always been about, oh, you know, we're not with good corporatism and the corporate overlords and all this other stuff. No, your party has had ties to corporations for a very long time. You are just as guilty like the Republicans. The only difference is the Republicans do not hide it. This is the one thing I agree wholeheartedly with what Malcolm, J Malcolm X have been saying forever. Republicans do not hide it. Whereas Democrats, they act like, A, they are above repro reproach, that um, when they are caught, they never ever admit it to it. They never even acknowledge it. They act like everyone just sweeps this under a rug and no one's the wiser. 
and this is why, why so many individuals and like including yours, Michael X say that these individuals are the most dangerous, but yet they will chastise a Republican and say, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. But yet when they do the same things, they are completely oblivious to it. So, all righty. The RDO held City Hall from 1904 when Martin Berman was elected through 1946 when Shep Morrison was elected mayor under promises to remove RDO influences from City Hall. So the stinking um, swamp that was the Democrat Party um, was so bad that here you had someone who, if they were elected president, well, elected mayor would promise to remove this filth from within the government. Um, it was located, okay, so the RDO's home was a social club called the Katwa, the Katwa Club. It was located for four years on 518 St. Charles Avenue within the same block as the Gallery Hall the site of City Hall until 1958. When the club was chartered in 1897, members included 39 men who held office. Members included Senator S.D. Uh, McEnergy, McEnner and M Murphy R. Foster, Governor Francis T. Nichols, and W.W. W. Hurd. The RDO is still active and endorses members of both parties. Saying that RDO also stands for Republican, Democrat, and other, it endorses um, um, it endorses Republican Bill Cassidy for U.S. Senator over incumbent Democrat Mary Ledru in two thousand and four. Yeah, that's not what. Right, okay, so they even tried to change this. They even they even tried to change who they are. They wanted to call themselves uh, that it also stands for Republican, Democrat, and others. No, it never stood for Republican, Democrats, or other. They were called the regular Democrat organization or the old regulars and the oldest. Um, and how I how did I come across this information? Actually, when I was reading about. Um, When I was reading about, um, Emmett Till, this little group here, if a lot of people hadn't noticed this, there, a lot of people might not know this, but there was a Mississippi Freedom Summer of 1967. They did not register this many voters. Contrary to what Wikipedia did, you need multiple sources and you will find out that it's false. Um, but they were responsible for um, getting in voters, more voters, to bl uh, black voters to vote. So someone may ask, wh why did this or why did, who are these individuals? Why did this start? And all this other stuff. So um, this part, this little event went on to create the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. Now, we'll read a little bit about this movement, the Freedom Summer from the history. So the Freedom Summer of, um, or the Mississippi Summer Project was a 1964 voter registration drive aimed at increasing the number of registered vote black voters in Mississippi. Yes, you would not like when I hear about Democrats today talk about voter suppression. I find this ironic that they were the individuals who were doing the suppressing in Mississippi. So over 700 mostly white volunteers joined African-Americans in Mississippi to fight against voter intimidated, in, intimidation and discrimination at the polls. The movement was organized by... 
civil rights organization like the Congress for Radical Equality and the Student Nonviolent Coordination Committee <laughs> and runs by the local Council of Federation Organizations. Freedom Summer volunteers were met with violent resistance from the KKK and the members of state and local law enforcement. News coverage of beatings, false arrests, and even murders drew internet, um, international attention to the civil rights movement. The increasing, the increased awareness it brought to voter discrimination helped lead to the voting rights of 1965. So the KKK, um, contrary to what a lot of Democrats tell you, the KKK was not, I repeat, was not something that was conjured up by the Republican Party. The KKK erected from um, the jaws of what is known as the Democrat Party. They were also the individuals responsible for Jim Crow laws. So you guys can look at this. This is not something that Republicans had a hand in. No, they did not. But um, what... This and the, okay, so let's keep on reading. What was the cause of the Freedom Summer? Okay, so by 1964, the civil rights movement was in full swing. The Freedom Riders had spent 1960 had spent 1961 riding buses through the segregated South, fighting Jim Crow laws that dictated where black riders could sit, eat, and drink. Martin Luther King gave his famous "I have a speech, I have a dream" speech at August. 1963 March on Washington as 250,000 people gathered before him at Lincoln Memorial. Despite all this progress, the South remained segregated, especially when it came to polls where African Americans faced violence and intimidation when they attempted to exercise their constitutional rights to vote. Poll tax and literacy tests designed to silence black voters were common. Without access to polls, political change in favor of civil rights was slow to non-existent. Mississippi was chosen as the site of the Freedom um, Summer Project due to its historic, historically low levels of African-American voter registration. In 1962, less than 7% um, of the state eligible black voters were registered to vote. Um, what sprung from this was... Oh man, that's oh man, it's so sad. So I just skipped down to this part. It says, "Was the freedom success? Was the freedom summer a success? Voter registration in Mississippi was not greatly impacted by the freedom voter uh, by the freedom summer. While seventeen thousand Black Mississippians attempted to register to vote that summer, only twelve hundred were successful. The Mississippi Project did establish more than forty freedom schools, serving a combined three hundred student three thousand students. The freedom summer." Also, we uh, also raise awareness for the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, which is known as the MFDP, about which Dr. King said, if you value your party, if you value your nation, if you value demo democratic government, you have no alternative but to recognize with full voice and vote the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. So look, there's a, this, I, w I would like for people also to understand there is a difference between democratic and Democrat. Just because you are a Democrat does not mean that you're democratic. The Democrat Party, for a very, 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 very long time, were never democratic at all. Where they were only democratic if you were white, man, that's it. People like people on that side love to say that this is something that is um, an affliction of a conservative party, but it was never their affliction. Um, this is something that is deep within the Democrat Party. So like Dr. Luther King was saying here, if you truly, however, are Democratic, this is the party that you would join. Um, but, you know, um, let's go on. And this is one of the reasons why I, to this day, still do not understand why people will not give credit to Lyndon B. Johnson as being the one individual that who said, who claimed he was a friend to the black community. And by giving us that, um, that welfare system, he destroyed us. So let's keep on continuing on looking at some of the, some of the th things that he sought to, um, in his, 
in his version, what he thought would be equity, diversity, and inclusion. Let's see his ways of managing so 